Jackson! Starting the vlog today with Jackson. I know a lot of you guys were asking about him, so I thought I'd show him in a video. So there he is, all good and groomed. We just got him groomed the other day. You like your new uh, haircut. Another thing too, a lot of you guys asked about this Camaro seat that I have, and that's exactly what it is. It's from a fifth gen Camaro, and uh, it's just a base model seat. It's not a ZL1 seat. Some guys were saying it's a ZL1 seat. Uh, it's just a regular base model cloth seat, and there it is. And literally, I had this made, well, I shouldn't say I had it made, I found it on the Camaro forums, and there was a guy that made two of these because I guess he replaced his factory seats, and um, he decided why not make chairs out of them. So I thought that was a genius idea, and it's very comfortable. Those of you that have sit in a fifth gen Camaro, you know, you know that the seats are comfortable. Uh, it still functions like a regular seat, the headrest goes up and down. This kind of I mean it doesn't go all the way but it still functions like that controls on the side here they don't work obviously because it's not plugged into anything uh, maybe if I could hook it up to power it would actually work but um, it doesn't recline or anything like that um, the only thing it does do is when you sit on the chair it, it does like it kind of moves back like that so you can lean back on it and he basically just made his own platform here and fixed it to uh, the bottom of a chair now you can see right there, and then the handle here will let it uh, obviously raise and lower and everything like that. So yeah, it's very nice when I edit on the computer right there. It's a very comfortable chair, and I thought, why not? It's a Camaro chair. Right, Jackson? <laughs> so here it is. This is the world's most intelligent battery with Bluetooth wireless technology. So you're probably wondering two things. One, how do you activate Bluetooth if there are no buttons or anything on this battery? And two, why do you have the battery sitting on its side like that? Well, I'll answer both questions with one answer. This battery is sitting on its side like this because depending on the orientation of the battery, it activates different modes. So while the battery is on its side like this, the positive terminal is pointed down and the negative terminal is pointed up. This is deactivation mode. So basically, the battery is not active in any way and it sends less than one volt to the terminals. So this here is the 220 series and that basically means that it's the highest level battery they offer. They offer a 210 series as well, and then they offer a 108 series, which basically is half of this. If you notice, there are two different modules put together to equal one battery. And that's because if one of them fails, you have a backup module. Now this 220 series one I have is the most powerful battery in their lineup, and that's because it's basically meant for the most demanding uh, situations. And also, this thing only weighs I think 15 pounds, so it's extremely light. So here is why it's the most intelligent battery. When I flip it up on end like this, you notice the lights start flickering and it's now entering activation mode. So that means this battery is now being powered like a normal battery. When it's upright, you can hook it up to your car or your truck or whatever. You can also connect Bluetooth to this battery and we're gonna do that here in just a second to show you all the different features you can do with this. You can monitor everything through an app, through a, basically a, um, in the Endura Power app. There are all the different batteries they offer. I have the 220, is that one right there. If you guys have a motorcycle, you would just get the small 108 series. So the Bluetooth technology, what all can you do with it? Well, there are a couple cool things right off the bat that you can do with it. One is you can disable the battery completely, which would basically be the same as disconnecting a normal battery. You can control it right from your smartphone, or you can set it to low power mode, which basically means that it won't kill all of the juice to the terminals, It'll still allow a little bit to travel to, you know, maintain the settings in your radio system or whatever, but you will not be able to start the vehicle, which is sort of like an anti-theft device. Another cool thing is it has its own heater. So, when you're starting your car, let's say, in the dead of winter and it's like 10 degrees out or hell, even zero degrees out, this has an actual heater that you can control with your app or if the car does not start immediately, it will automatically turn on the heater and the battery and it'll stay on for about 10 minutes or so or until it reaches a certain temperature and then from there, your car should start. It also has a short circuit protection mode. So if it senses there's a short circuit going on, it will protect the battery from that. And going along with that sort of protection, it also has the over and under voltage protection as well. Now these lights up here that we saw in the beginning when I basically flipped the battery on its end here, uh, those 
are basically your indicator lights. Those are the only things on the battery that tell you what's going on. So like I said, there are no buttons on it. It's just like a normal battery. You got your two terminals there and you have these indicator lights. And basically, if you read the directions here, it shows you what all those indicator lights mean. So let's go into the app and we'll connect it to the battery. So we'll go into the app. Oh, no batteries found. Would you like to connect your first battery? Yes. What would you like your battery to be named? We'll do... Tarmageddon ZL1's battery. Okay. Choose your battery type. I have the 220. Select an image for your battery. We'll just do the truck for now because I think I'm going to be putting it in the truck. Oh, I guess I got to register. Okay, so after you register, it shows the battery right there. I'm going to click on the battery. Battery disconnected, attempting to connect to battery. We're going to turn the Bluetooth mode on this, so we need to orient the battery down, the negative terminal, so it will start flashing between blue and green. It said it may take up to 30 seconds for this cycle to complete. Okay, now it's done, so we can orient it up. So Bluetooth mode is on. There we go. Would you like to pair with your phone? Pair. Please enter the battery system serial number located on your battery. So they give you this barcode here on the instructions, as you can see, and then you scan it. Um, found barcode, okay. Please enter the, okay, so you hit the okay. And there it is. It is now connected. And it's showing 100%, obviously. Um, it is currently 74, 75 degrees, the temperature of the actual battery, which is pretty much, you know, indoor temperature right now. And then we can show the data of everything else. There's battery terminal voltage, battery capacity, all that. Let's try power off mode. So this mode, it says, will completely shut down the battery, however, Bluetooth connectivity will remain active. You will not be able to start your engine, and all radio presets will be lost. So this is the mode, basically, that completely disconnects your battery, as if you were just disconnecting the terminals. Now, if we want to, let's say, uh, do low power mode, which basically retains, it'll show you, it'll tell you right here, Low power mode will enable low power output. You will not be able to start your engine, but all radio presets will be maintained. So some of you guys might do this every time you park your car. That way, you know, all your presets are still there and everything like that, but you won't be able to start the car. So this here is sort of like the anti-theft mode. If we turn the heater on, the heater will turn on for at most 10 minutes while the battery temperature is below 86. But either way, this battery is pretty darn cool. I've never seen one with Bluetooth connectivity, and I definitely haven't seen one that you could control from your phone. So I haven't really decided which vehicle I want to put this battery in. I might put it in the Silverado since that sits outside. It's my daily driver, and you know, during the winter, it's going to be outside, like I said, in the cold weather. So I feel like this battery is going to be a lot better and perform a lot better in those kind of conditions. Thank you to Elitice, the company that sent me this. Endura Power Intelligent Battery. So you guys will have to check them out. I'll have all of the info below and the website info and everything like that in the description of the video. So we're gonna go for a ride in the 2017 because I wanna tell you guys what I have in mind for this car as far as modifications go. I know I haven't done anything to this car and I really haven't said anything about what I was gonna do to it so I thought I would just go for a little ride here and talk to you guys about uh, some of my plans for this car and what I, what I think I'm gonna be doing to it. So you're probably wondering why I've waited so long to do anything to this car performance wise and if you look at my 2013 that's got a lot of stuff done to it so why didn't I follow the same path in this car? Uh, well I'm sort of waiting for uh, some things to be built for the car. Uh, one in particular is a cold air intake I've been waiting for uh, cold air inductions to finish up their Carbon Elite Series intake for the uh, ZL1 and the SS and everything like that. They said it should be available sometime in August, so hopefully it will be ready fairly soon, if not by the end of August, definitely by the beginning of September. And that's going to be pretty much the one of the first performance mods that I that I do to the car. I'm also working on something with another company that I have done work with here recently, and uh, it's going to be 
basically designed for this car. Uh, it's going to be kind of like a custom setup for it. And because um, they don't have anything on the market right now for, for this vehicle, or actually I should say this engine, the LT4. So with that being said, there's definitely going to be something huge coming for this car. I've also been talking to uh, a few companies about some suspension mods on this car as well and um, hopefully that will be taken care of in the next month or so. And I still definitely want to go to a track, you know, I want to take this around a track and see how it does uh, just for fun and really, because I've never really done that. I mean, I did autocross racing a couple times, but I've never gone on a big open track and experienced that. So that's something I definitely want to do in this car only because it's kind of what it's meant to do. So hopefully sometime here in the future, I can do that. But anyways, I'm gonna go grub on some Chick-fil-A, and then I gotta go to work, and I'm gonna be watching the eclipse today. So when I get to work, I have like burning glasses, and I think I have another face shield that I could use to kind of double up a layer, and that should give me enough of protection to look directly at the eclipse. So that's what I'm gonna go do at work and see if I can get some uh, good images for you guys. All right, so I'm at work right now. Excuse the helmet and everything like that, but I'm gonna use my burning glasses and part of this face shield we use when we're pouring steel and I'm gonna kind of like cover it up like this I doubled it up I folded it in half so that should give me enough layer of protection to see this thing but I already looked at it once and it's not bad yeah, you, can, you can definitely see it like this it looks like a, it looks look like a moon are you doing the cardboard box thing Here, no, no no check check it out through that what is that a welding shield or uh, is no, it one of these of those. oh four of them yeah Oh, there we go. That's what it looks like right there. You can see like the reflection of it below the actual sun. Pretty cool. This is a good idea. Four of them is like perfect. Four of these things stacked up and then... It, dude, you could like, you could use it as like a poor man's welding mask. Alrighty, so that was pretty cool to see that eclipse. Um, it wasn't a full eclipse. We only had like 80% of it or something like that here. Uh, but I think they said in like 40 years or 30 years, I have no idea, uh, there's gonna be like a full eclipse again. So maybe by the time I'm like 70 years old, I'll be able to go somewhere and actually see the whole entire thing. I think you guys could see it in like Arizona or some someplace, I don't know. But I'm located here in Harrisburg, PA, so I can only see about 80%. But that was the best clip I got for for you guys was the one where it reflected kind of like a little lens flare there. So if you didn't see it, I hope you enjoyed that. All right, so I just got home from work and I actually stopped at the P.O. Box on the way to work today, but Lauren was too excited. She was like trying to force me to open this box off camera, so I just want to give a shout out to the person who sent me my first toy truck. It's a Silverado truck, and it's a 20... Ah! What is he doing over there? Anyways, it's my first uh, Silverado toy truck, and it looks really cool. I like it. Camera's focusing on my face right now, sorry. I'm still trying to figure out how to use this camera correctly. But um, either way, yes, thank you to, somebody sent a letter here. Let me see what it says real quick. I wanted to send you something for a long time, just have not found out what. As soon as I saw this toy truck for sale, I immediately thought of your red Silverado, so I thought this would be perfect. Hope you like it. I do, John, I love it, it's awesome. Watch your videos all the time, keep up the good work. Thank you, John, really appreciate it. I love the red Silverado truck. Look, the door's open. The tailgate goes down. Look at that. The tailgate goes down. Does a hood pop too? Oh, no hood pop. That's okay. But yes, love the truck, John. Thank you. So if you guys want to send me anything else in my P.O. Box, all the info will be below in the description. Come here, Lauren. Say the outro. You know, <laughs> say it. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this outro to you. Okay. Let me fix my hair. Please hit that subscribe button. No! No. No. Start from the beginning of the outro. What do I do? Um, please follow all of my social media. It will be in the description below. Hit that subscribe button and have a great day. You heard her.